Today's a big day, boys. There were a lot of cards released, but... You know, there's only one card that people are waiting for, and that is... Chaos Breaker Dragon. So, let's go through English Twitter first. There is a lot of... There was actually a lot of cards, you know. We, they, they released the full Jewel Knight playset, they released Ashley, and they, they released a billion PRs as well. So, let's go through all of it, including all the card of the days and all that... That is related to Chaos Breaker Dragon, because... Trust me, they're related, alright? So first off, first PR we got is Triple Dark Armor. Now, uh, this is for Shadow Paladin. Uh, its effect is just Con Vanguard Circle during your turn. All your front row Triple Dark Armors get power plus 5,000. And then an act on the Vanguard Regard Circle, Soul Blast 1, retire a Regard, not named Triple Dark Armor, and search your deck for up to one Triple Dark Armor, call it to Regard Circle, and shuffle it. So very meme card, I think. Um, yeah, that's about it. Very meme card. Next card, we have Dark Irregulars, Werewolf Ketsa. When retired from Guardian Circle, you may put this card into your soul, and then act soul cost, bind this card and soul charge you. So this is actually very interesting. This in premium is like a, we, not, not a Dimension Creeper replacement, kind of, except you can reuse Dimension Creeper. So you're basically, the thing is you're trading guard value, because this is better guard value, you get a better power value as well, which are things that, which are things that Dark Irregulars really needs. And they also need to be able to to be able to guard at the same time, put things in their souls. This solves bo both their problems, both their problems. So, I think this is a very interesting card. It, it comes down to whether you want to reuse your creepers or not, and you're willing to trade the power, the defensive power for that as well. And um, yeah, because you have plays where you soul blast your creeper, then then put them all back with emblem master, soul charge, soul blast again, and all that. But this one, you only get to use it once, but, you know, it's 10k shield. It's 10k shield. It's 8k. So, yeah, interesting. Also, yeah, Guardian Circle goes into Souls. It's kind of consistent like that. Next one we have is a Narukami. So, this one is Desert Gunner Gordon. Auto Vanguard Circle at the end of your opponent's turn. If your opponent has one or less front row regards, Soul Blast 1 and draw a card. Okay, that's it's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, second effect is auto regard circle at the end of the battle attack. If your vanguard attack hit this turn, put this into your soul and draw cards. So another one of those uh, filter draw things, which is kind of nice, except it's reliant on your vanguard hitting. Um, and the other one's just kind of, if they don't commit a field for you to retire, you can draw a card. I feel like it's a bit too dependent on what your opponent does. And slots in something like Vanquisher is pretty, pretty limited. So I'm not sure if we'll see much play for this. And then... Now, what's the next one? This one, we've seen this one before, I think. It's just at the end of the battle that attacked if you have Vanguard with Phantom in its card name, Cannon Blast 1 and retire this unit. Call the Blaster Dark from your drop zone to Regard Circle. So it works with Phantom Blaster Dragon, works with Mordred Phantom. Uh, pretty interesting. It does, it's 5k, so you can search it out. And um, you can do the effect after your attack, so you can get some value from it as well. But while also creating extra, extra attacks with the Blaster Dark. And get generating more force markers if you're with the, uh, the Mordred Phantom So pretty good, pretty good BI, just requires a Cannon Blast 1, which might be a bit tough. And then now we're moving on to Clan Selection. We're revealing Ashley first, Jewel Knight. So new, new Jewel Knights they released. We've got Charging Jewel Knight Morvidus. Act Regard Circle, cost Cannon Blast 1, and put a normal unit from your drop zone on the bottom of your deck. Soul Charge 1, and one of your units with a Jewel Knight in its car name gets power plus 5,000 until the end of turn. So it's got this nice recycle ability, and then it's got some extra Soul Charge, which is pretty good, because Soul is important in Standard. Uh, auto Vanguard Circle, Regard Circle, when your other unit is placed on this unit's circle, draw a card. So when you ride over it, you draw a card. When you, pl when you play over it on the Regard Circle, uh, when you call over it, I mean, you draw a card. So it's a pretty interesting effect, kind of gives you an idea on what Jewel Knights are going to be. Next, we have the Grade 2 Jewel Knight, Explode Jewel Knight, Laylee. Auto Regard Circle, when it attacks, costs put two normal units from your drop zone on the bottom of their deck in any order. So you get to put two back instead of one. Still a Soul Charge 1, though. And then this unit gets power plus 5,000 until the end of that battle. And then the second effect is Auto Vanguard Circle or Regard Circle. When your other unit is placed on this unit circle, that place unit gets power 10,000 until the end of turn. So not a draw, but still similar effect to the Grade 1. And then finally, we've got our Ashley. We've got the nice, nice zero art here. Pure Heart Jewel Knight Ashley. Auto Vanguard Circle or Regard Circle. At the end of the battle that attacked, Soul Blast 2. Search a deck for up to one Grade 2 or less card with Jewel Knight in its card name. Call it to the Regard Circle and shuffle your deck. So, 
keep in mind this is a Vanguard and a Regard ability. Uh, if this unit is on the Vanguard circle, call up to two cards instead of one. So if it's on the Regard, you can just ba it's basically replacing itself. Vanguard circle creates two more attacks, which is really really good. Roll Paladin getting more attacks, it's good stuff. Auto Vanguard circle and Regard circle. When your other unit is placed on this unit circle, Counter Blast one, and that place unit gets critical plus one until the end of them. So that's that's kind of it's kind of interesting. You can really push damage or control the damage if you really want to. Uh, one thing is, you, if you have three of these in the front row, you basically make seven attacks, which is pretty insane. But you do require a lot of soul. But remember, the other jewel knights also, when they come into play, they get soul. So there's there's a bunch of that happening. I don't think there's really other jewel knights in standard in terms of premium. There's like a I think there's a jewel knight grade one called Christine that can kind of make. A pretty good combo can search like a grade three of this so yeah there's premium is going to be pretty pretty crazy i like the fact that this works with the regard circle so you can royals can just use this as another extra attack which is pretty nice um yeah and the, the second second effect is kind of flavorful you know the old break ride 10k and a crit this one gives anything 10k and a crit even on the regard circle so Delicious, delicious. All right, now we move on to the, the, the real cards of the day. The, the one that everyone has been waiting for. Uh, card of the days, this was released yesterday. Uh, Starvader Craving, Craving Claw. When it's attack, all the attack it boosted hits a Vanguard. Look at five cards from the top of your deck. Reveal up to one card with Starvader in its card name from among them and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. Now, keep in mind, Starvader cards in standard. There's only this, the Grade 2, and Chaos Breaker Dragon, so there's not a lot you can pick from. Uh, second effect is Act Regard Circle. If your opponent's Vanguard is Grade 3 or greater, put this unit into your soul, choose up to one of your opponent's locked cards and unlock it. If you unlock a card, choose one of your opponent's Regards other than the unlocked unit and lock it. So, you unlock, you, you basically lock, you imply you lock something, then you unlock that to unlock something else. So if you lock the back row, then you lock a front row, right? It's value from there. So pretty interesting grade one. It helps you tutor your cards and it helps you set up better locks. <laughs> set up better locks. I, I think it's pretty interesting. In premium, this might be used too, just because you can you can search. Uh, and also the, the, the second effect in premium, all the locks are based on what your opponent chooses. And then instead you can just say, okay, you, you, you lock the back row. Now I want to lock a front row instead. So there's something going on there that might be pretty interesting. Uh, second card that we're going to see is the Grade 2, Bisection Starvader Zirconium. Auto Vanguard Circle, Regard Circle. When placed, if you have a Vanguard with Starvader in its card name, you may counterblast one. Your opponent looks at the top card of his or her deck and puts it on an open Regard Circle as a lock card. So you can kind of mill your opponent out like that. But keep in mind, it has to be called to an open circle. So if your opponent is full boards, then there is nothing you can do. He peeks, you waste counterblast and he smiles, right? Uh, if that lock card was placed in the back row, you draw a card and this unit gets power 10k until the end of the turn. So if you put it in the front row, you get nothing, but they locked a front row card, so good times for you, right? Uh, if they look, put it on the back row though, you get to get stuff, you get 10k, you get, you get a draw. So that is great too, right? That is great too. Second effect is a continuous effect. If your opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater and he or she has a locked card, all of your Vanguard's original critical becomes two. So basically, Vanguard just gets forced to, right? Becomes forced to. So pretty interesting here. It creates extra lock cards um, that you can play with and has a mill effect. Well, I think old Glenu's decks was like a, you could play it as a mill deck pretty much. This kind of can help you with that. And then, yeah, getting getting draws from a counter blast one is, is pretty decent too. I mean, it, it technically it pluses your opponent. So if you don't have any good ways to get value from that or get a better position, then you're just giving your opponent free stuff. Uh, and then keep in mind that it does require counter blast one, and uh, counter blast one is not really something that is easily accessible in standard or counter charge one. I mean, so you have to be a bit careful in what you do. I think I think there's like a, there's several cards in Link Joker that do let you counter charge, but you have to you, you have to jump through a few hoops or they're not as free as something like. Like the OTT one where you put into your soul, right? So that's it. Great two. Now let's move on to the real thing. The, the real deal. All right. Star Vader, Chaos Breaker Dragon. Continuous Vanguard Circle, Regard Circle. During your turn, if your opponent has a locked card, this unit gets power plus 10,000. So automatically, you don't need to put any markers on this because it already gets 10k. Actually, you cannot put any markers because when it comes to play, it doesn't have a force marker. So it's, it's very bland. Very bland. Act Vanguard Circle once per turn. Uh, Counterblast 1, your opponent gets an imaginary gift force 
you choose one of your opponent's regard and lock it. So you give your opponent a force marker, they put it down somewhere, and then you lock one of your opponent's card. Just because you have to, when you give them the force, they have to do the action immediately. As, as far as I know, it's a rule action, so they do it even in the middle of effect. And then you lock something. You lock something. So pretty good. You lock one, counter blast one for a lock, once per hard, once not a hard once per turn, but it's a once per turn. Um, keep in mind that the power gate is a regard circle effect as well, which is kind of interesting because Chaos, old Chaos had the problem where it didn't get enough power, but it was, was able to get advantages through locking from hand. This one you're actually getting some power, alright? And then the third effect that it has is when your opponent's lock card is unlocked, you may soul blast one, retire one of those unlocked units, you draw a card, your opponent removes a total of two markers from his or her circles or protect it from his or her hand, and you get an imaginary gift force for each marker or protect removed. So you're basically giving him a force marker, and then next turn, they give it back to you with interest. With interest. Now keep in mind that this effect is not limited to once per turn. So whenever something gets unlocked, you technically can soul blast one, to get that draw, retire that card, and get up to two Force Markers. So that's where this, the Grade 1 comes into play. Uh, you, you, you unlock something you don't like. If they unlock the back row, you unlock that. You retire it, you get all their Force Markers, and then you lock lock a front row, right? And the next turn, you get another all their Force Markers, or get, get more gifts from them, right? Uh, keep in mind also that you, you, you're giving the Force Marker to, like, Excel Clans or Protect Clans, right? Which... I mean, it's kind of like saying you don't get to use one column, but here's a 10k to make up for it, for, make up for it which is uh, definitely not good enough. <laughs> it's definitely not good enough. 10k just doesn't cover it. And then you take it back next turn. So they can technically give you the force markers back, or they could give you like their protect markers or their excel circles back, and just keep the force marker. So you have that weird thing going on. It's kind of very flavorful, you know, uh, Chaos Breaker, you know, Clown... Joker, <laughs> he has a force bucket up, no, taking it back. So, yeah, yeah, I think this is gonna make a pretty big impact in standard. I think, uh, although you only get to lock one, it is gated behind a counter blast one. Um, you technically are not gated behind grade three, only the, the the grade two crit is. But if you're against smart people, I don't think they're gonna be committing much of a hand or or just full like. If you go first, I'm not going to just commit a whole hand for you to lock for free and get free stuff. So, yeah, I think in that side, against smart, again, lock against smart players, probably is, it's going to be a bit harder, but you're going to basically dominate every single weaker player out there. You yeah, know, I really like this effect. I really like this effect. I really like the flavor behind the effect, the idea behind the effect, too. It's very fresh. It's very fresh. It's, it's nothing like the stuff we've really seen in, um, in clan selection so far. These, these two reveals today have been amazing. Ashley and Chaos Breaker. Now, uh, Chaos Breaker and Premium, I think, definitely has a lot of potential as well. You probably won't be getting the lock from the, uh, from the, you know, the act effect, but getting power, again, is okay. You can play it on Regard, get power. But also, you have way more lock potential cards, right? You know, G Guard, lock, lock X, and then you get, like, up to six Force Markers, maybe? If that's how it works. So, yeah, that's... That's pretty crazy. Also, keep in mind, there's a PR in Link Joker in Standard that doesn't let your opponent unflip their cards at the end of turn. So, they can't... You can technically lock for more than one turn. Alright, but I think that requires a soul. And that's probably where things become a bit limiting for Chaos Breaker. Uh, that soul cost, you, uh, you will eventually run out unless you ride over with Chaos Breaker Dragon. And, uh, you know, the only Star Vader as well is... Chaos Breaker Dragon, you don't really have many other other cards available, so... Yeah, yeah, that's pretty, pretty crazy, um... I think this will be a pretty strong deck, pretty strong deck. I think, like, the tier list... The tier list is definitely kind of changing, because suddenly, things that retire can make an empty board again become much more flavorful, or strong, because... I can guarantee you, people will be playing Chaos Breaker Dragon, this... this it, even if Chaos is crap, people will still play it because it's Chaos, right? So, like, Spectral suddenly becomes decent again, you know? You're thinking, wow, well, Spectral versus Gurgit? I'd rather Gurgit, but Spectral retires its own stuff. So, uh, technically, technically, it can, uh, it can kind of counter this effect. Also, you don't have to, it creates Excel 2s that you can kind of trade for Force, and you can put the Force on the 
Spectral Duke now and make a swing even bigger. Uh, and then if you like ride a Pelinor as all of that, that also sweet like three swings like that. It's pretty crazy, right? Pretty crazy. Like Descendant randomly kind of gets buffed. <laughs> uh, Nairos, Nairos looking good. Empty fields look good. Silver Silthorn looks good as well. You know, empty field. So yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Um, things like Luard and Gurgit kind of just feel a bit gypped because they, they lose all their force markers. They can't really get rid of their field. So they just sit there and get locked. Um, Blueing! Blueing Revan! Yeah, so uh, Blueings can't get targeted, so you can't get locked. That means you can't unlock. That means they don't get to, to take all your stuff. So yeah, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. I, I, I like it. it. There's some counter that... People have to counter you now, right? People have to think about, okay, my, my metagame is infested with, with Chaos Breaker Dragon. Uh, what do I play? I mean, it feels kind of bad for clan loyalists, right? Because they, they, they're too loyal. They don't get to swap. But um, finding, like, even finding playstyles and ways to counter this will be kind of interesting to see. And um, I'm sure lots of people are crying today because, yeah, lock, lock is back in standard. So... Really interesting card. Uh, no, like the, the design of this is insane. I think it, it's definitely very fresh. It feels like they got the new guys in already doing clan selection, and hopefully this is kind of even though even though it's lock, even though it's standard lock. Hopefully this is where uh, Bushroad is pushing their card design, getting that flavor there, getting that nostalgia there as well, but also getting these these interesting effects going. Too. And I can't wait to see what people come up with in standard, but also also premium also premium, right? So uh, that's it from me. I'm pretty happy because I Don't know if you guys know I'm a I'm a link jerk in main as well. So yeah <laughs> It's one of the few decks I, I did top with so um, Yeah, let's uh let's see how it goes on Saturday <laughs> Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. I talked way too much today. I'll see you guys in the next video and bye